Today's video is about getting started with a great little website for creating animations online called flipanim.com. So you're going to type that in your browser window. And once you navigate there, you'll see this screen. Right? And the first thing that you need to do is register because otherwise you cannot save or download your animations, which becomes a problem when we're going to work on it more than once. Or you need to use your animation for um, turning in for a class assignment or posting to your social media, something like that. So once you get here, you're going to fill out all of this information. Say, I am not a robot agree to the terms, and then register. From there, you'll go back to the website to log in. If you've already created your account, you would click this here where it says log in here in order to get back to where you were before. So I'm gonna pause the video, fill this out, and then come back. All right, once I've logged in, and I can see myself up here, you could click on it, see your username, this is also where you would see the animations that you have created or are currently editing that would fall here under animations. Any comments from the world would happen here. That's assuming that you share your animation publicly, which comes when you're going to save. So the first step to using flipanim.com is to register and log into your account. Let's take a tour of the tools on flipanim.com. So once I log in, you can see I'm logged in here. If I click on it, it will take me to my profile. All right, but once you log in, this is the main screen that you see. So you're gonna wanna click check out new beta editor because you get a whole lot more cool tools that way than if you just stick around with the other one. So I'm going to um, start here. This is where you get to the editor. You want to draw an animation. There's some other options in the menu. This is where you see random animations that other people are creating. All right, but I'm going to roll this up a little bit so that uh, you can just see this editing screen. So here's the editing space. This is one frame in your animation. All right. There's some layers. You can sort of change the paper um, if you want to play around with those. Um, down here, you've got add a layer, All right. or take a layer away, or throw it away altogether, and it'll prompt you. It can all be undone. All right, which leads me to the fact that the undone button will show up here once I've made something. So undone, undo, rather, and redo happen right here. Let's come up here. This is the pencil tool. You can select any colors that you like down here. I'm a purple fan, so we'll go with some purple just for the sake of discussion. You can also change the thickness of your lines. So if I want a little tiny line, or I want a little bigger line. I'm signing my name for you. I want a real fat one. All right. And then if I don't like it, I can just undo it all. all right. So once I've drawn something, you also have an eraser tool. And the eraser tool is the same thing where you can change the thickness of that line. Okay. And it'll reveal the paper that's underneath. Now let's say I switch over here to yellow. I'm still on the eraser. All right, and I put some yellow in here. But I wanna go back to purple. Well, I don't know which purple I used, or if I click on this, really what purple did I use? So if you grab this eyedropper tool and you click on a color, it's going to automatically load that color for you. So it's a nice editing tool and a quick way to take care of that. Okay, now, this is the paint bucket tool, or the dump, or fill, sometimes it's called. And you click on that, and it will fill up whatever space is there. So in this case, I just filled the paper, which ironically is the same color as their background, so it disappeared, all right? But if I undo that, all right, let's say that I have a shape that I want to fill in, all right? 
You don't have to fill it the same color. You can fill it a different color. But it's just going to fill in wherever there's lines. Now, if you have this problem, and I choose that fill tool and I click over here, oh, it was so good. I didn't do what I wanted. I didn't make the mistake. All right. Okay. Here's what I was trying to show you. So if I fill this and it fills a large area, there's probably a break. And that's where you can come down here to this. You can zoom in. Um, it'll pan around. Oh, let me undo it so we can go back to where we came from. All right. So you can zoom in and find out where the break in that image. Okay. I'm going to clear all this out just for a minute though. Yes, I want to clear the frame. I know I can't get back to it. It's all good. All right, this is a highlighter tool. And at first glance, okay. at first glance, the highlighter tool looks like, let's make a little fatter for us here. It looks like the paint bucket tool. The difference, however, is that if I choose another color, when I roll this on here, okay, it's going to actually work transparent on top of other things. So you can see where the blue mixes with the violet. It turns it into a blue-violet or a darker blue. Okay, so that's kind of handy, especially if you want some effects. This one here is what I guess we would call a recolor tool. So what this one will do is only color, alright, it's only going to color where we already have paint. So if I take this recolor tool, and I'm drawing down here where there's nothing, nothing happens. But once I hit this spot where I've already colored, it will recolor what's already there. So that may come in handy if you wanted to add shading or shadows um, or make any kind of adjustments to what you already have. Okay. So now that I've recolored all of that, okay, let's talk about this paint roller. Okay, the roller is a little bit the opposite of the recolor tool. And in this case, when I roll it on here, it goes behind what's already on the frame. So as I color this in, it's going to go behind what I have, but because this is transparent, it's going to change the color where they overlap, which again is kind of nifty. So even here, so I keep overlapping and it's going to keep giving me different colors. And the fact that you can kind of layer this and come up with different things, and the more it layers and the more it crosses over, the more the color changes, and that's pretty fascinating, especially if you wanted to kind of create some effects in your artwork. Okay, this tool will um, fill a space. Oh, here, actually. Let me start over with a little drawing. Let's use a different color. Let's go with red. That. Okay, so let's say I have a smiley face. Hello world! Okay, when I push this button, it lets me move it. Okay, so when I'm saying it, it selects everything you've drawn. So right now I'm moving the whole face. But if I had more to this, like say he's got a neck, I give him some shoulders, right? There's his arms, I give him a shirt, okay. Now when I click this tool to move things, it's still going to move everything I've created. So there's not a selection option. So if I only want to move the head, then I would have to... Um, only have the head here to move. This is a rotate tool and it free rotates from the spot where you click. So in this case I'm pivoting on the kind of nose axis but if I wanted to change it down here right you could click there 
This is a zoom in, zoom out. But again, it's gonna zoom in and zoom out on everything that you have in your frame. So it's kind of a pan almost. You could, you know, move it a little and actually use this to create an animation in itself. Again, this was the zoom, zoom in, zoom out. I can um, move around within that zoom, which is handy if you have some little details to make, okay? So that's a quick tour of the basic creation tools here. There will be a few other tools that we will talk about, but that will be in a different video about how to actually create an animation on flipanim.com.